to the lectures on NPTEL on Animal Physiology. So, today we will be initiating the section 5, which is essentially the renal system or you can call it uh, kidneys and the regulation of body fluids or excretory system. So, we have talked about uh, the way the blood from the heart is being pumped and it goes the impure blood goes to the lungs, where it gets uh, the essential oxygen, which it lacks after supplying the whole body. So, the oxygenated blood from the heart goes to the lungs, gets oxygenated, comes back and then it is being pumped all over the body. This is one mode of uh, clearing up the blood there is another mode, where basically you have to get rid of the other salts, which are present in it, which body does not need like urea and many other salts are there, which has to be got rid of and you have to maintain the exact osmolarity, osmolality, pH and all these things of the blood and that is taken care. The biggest chunk of this purification takes place in the kidneys. Essentially, what exactly happens here is that all the blood they go into the kidney and there is a kind of a very well developed filtration assembly, where the blood gets filtered out of all the unwanted things and the filtered blood moves back to the body, whereas all the unfiltered agents which are being, which are being rejected by the blood, while it pass through that mesh or the sieves it is just like you know filter, you it passes through and whatsoever is has to be rejected and it is selectively rejected. So, whenever you see a sieve, so say for example, you are you have a pot of uh, tea. So, when you pass through it, so all the tea leaves kind of get trapped. So, that is these are kind of sieves, which are not like non selective things. Okay. You cannot decide the whether the smaller leaves based on the size of the filter every things which are bigger than that will stay there things which are smaller than that will pass through it but here when the nature has designed the sieving mechanism it is much more uh, i should say a very smart material or much more like a very programmed thing based on there are different transporters which pulls it out through the sieves and it is much more uh, i should say uh, much more versatile as compared to a physical sieve, whenever you think of. Okay. So, it passes through the sieve and unwanted things are being thrown out and then the blood goes back and those unwanted things along with certain amount of water is being excreted out from your body in the form of urine. So, here there are few things, which has to be kept in mind. This whole process has to be very tightly regulated, because you cannot afford to lose a lot of water in that whole process, because when you are pulling out some of the electrolytes, which body does not need or some of the smaller molecules like urea and all these things. You have to ensure that in that process of clearing up, we should not lose sufficient water that we start suffering from dehydration or other physiological problem or the homeostasis goes on the wrong direction or the pH changes significantly. So, all these things are very tightly regulated. So, in order to understand this, in this section what we will essentially do, we will first in this class, we will talk about the anatomy of the sieve or anatomy of the kidney this is the first thing we will do today. And the individual elements of the kidney, which are responsible for this function. And then we will move on to the part 2, where we will be talking about the exact mechanism osmosis, reverse osmosis and all those mechanisms, which regulate this clearing us clearing up process. And then the third part of this segment, we will be talking about the different control mechanisms, which regulates this process. And simultaneously we will be talking about, if there is a misregulation, what is really meant by kidney failure, what is meant by you know 
dehydrating condition when the water is being lost, how the renin angiotensin system comes into play. So, that will be the third part of this uh, of this particular uh, segment what we will be dealing with. Okay. So, today let us start with uh, to give you an overall topology and morphology and anatomy of the kidney, because that will go all along in your understanding how really the blood is getting into the kidney and how it is getting you know cleared up filtered and everything. Okay. So, let us start with the anatomy of kidney. Okay. So, we are into section 5. Section 5 the kidneys and the body fluid. and the regulation of bloody fluid. Okay. Okay. Now, most of you have seen kind of at some point or other the structure of the kidney here I will just uh, draw it. So, it, it looks something like this, it is a bean shaped organ pretty much at the abdominal lower than the abdominal part of your body and there are blood vessels coming in. Oh, oh sorry. there are two kind of blood vessels which comes in the venous and the arterial blood. So, see likewise and then there is another organ which play which is called ureter. Okay. So, these bloods are these are taking the blood away towards the lungs uh, towards the uh, heart. So, and this is called ureter and these are the blood vessels which are entering or exiting. Arteries and the veins, so you have two kidneys. Now, inside this, it is interesting how the blood vessel. So, this part is divided into like two segments, one is called medulla, the other one is called cortex. So, the cortical region is from here to here, this is called the cortical region of the kidney or cortex of the kidney whereas the inner part is called the medulla okay so now when the blood vessels enters so this is very interesting the way so they distribute like this this geometry is very essential for you people to understand, because this geometry really helps in the whole clearing up process. Okay. So, there are these glitches which are coming in in between. Okay. Just keeping going. Likewise, almost like a tree like structure by which it is completely getting you know spreading out all over the place likewise. Okay. So, now what is happening is that, so blood is travelling, so I just missed upon on the other blood vessels I did this something like this, okay. just 
forget about it. So, now here is it the blood is entering and then the blood is moving all along these channels all over the place likewise and it all spread out there and all the finer branchings are all taking place at the far end of the cortical regions okay. likewise and so on and so forth. Okay. So, at this cortical region what you essentially have is something. So, if I had to kind of blow up this image this part so on to the next slide where I am going to blow up this image in the cortical region. So, it is something like this. this is at the cortical region how this is all getting spread. So, they are the branchings of the blood vessels like this at the cortical region. Likewise, okay. there is a lot of finer branching and along this finer branching lies your very adjacent to them lies a set of tubular structure like this. These are the individual tubular structures. Something like this okay. and this tubular structure what I am drawing in green what you are seeing now. These tubular structures are the structures which are essentially responsible these are the sieve elements or these are the filter elements and those are called nephrons. So, all along you will see uh, thousands and thousands of such a nephron structure. So, essentially what is happening if this is a blood vessel. So, there is a zone where the blood vessel is kind of under is kind of covered by like uh, those of who have seen a distillation assembly you might remember there is a coiling. So, there are certain zones where the blood fine capillaries are being coiled around by this nephrons. So, what is happening to the blood is that they, there are two tubes likewise. Okay. If this is the blood vessel if, if this hand what I am showing you now is my blood vessel it is, it is the blood is bringing. So, very close to it in close alignment so, this is the other hand it is is in close alignment sitting like this and it is at these zones where they are in physical contact. So, mind it they are not connected tube they are two separate tubes like this. Okay. There are two tubes it is something like this let me draw it that will make more sense it is something like if I had to cross section it is like this. So, if this is the blood vessel then it is in close proximity you have these vessels going, but they are two separate entities. Okay. So, if I have to if I blow up this part it will be something like this there you will be able to physically see two independent walls and it is this zone this critical zone where all the different kind of exchange processes are taking place. So, this is the zone of filtering zone this is the filtering zone and this is very interesting to understand what is the architecture of the other tube which I was drawing in green. The reason why I am highlighting on this part is this because unless this particular aspect is clear that how this whole topography is being maintained it is really really tough to understand how the kidney really functions. So, if you if now if I go back to this particular drawing. So, I can further so you will see in a textbook whenever you will see you will see something like this. So, the structure of the kidney in a textbook will be shown like this and on this you will find structures like this. You all might have come across in class 7 or 8 or somewhere this kind of structure and here the blood vessels are entering into the kidney here is another series of blood vessels which are entering into the kidney and here the ureter coming. 
So, essentially and, and I told you that this is the the cortical region and the medullary region. Okay. So, all those what is being collected from here during this whole filtration process I showed you, they are all eventually dumped onto this from all over the place by those vessels of what I called you the nephron. So, those filtration assemblies are called nephron, which are in which are in close proximity with the with the blood vessel. So, essentially the physical difference between whenever we talk about sieving or filtering is that, whenever we talk about filter we kind of from a tube we pour the whole fluid and it passes through a filter and goes through, but here no such thing is happening. Still the blood is not kind of entering out into any cavity or anything, it is remaining in a tube and is surrounded by another tube in close proximity and there are some osmotic phenomena which is taking place reverse osmosis, osmosis diffusion. Likewise, there are two or three phenomena by which the solutes are getting moved from one side of the tube to the other side of the tube and that is what constitute the whole filtration. With this overall understanding of it, what I will do? I will move on to the structure of those smallest component or those sieving elements which is the key for this particular class. Okay. Let us talk about the anatomy of those. So, essentially what we are talking about now, we are dealing with the anatomy of this individual elements. Okay. So, the anatomy of the individual element is something like this. Okay. So, this whenever you go through any textbook, it is a very complex structure, but I will try to simplify the structure as much as possible, because that is this is the very key to our understanding. So, okay. Now, these we are considering this as cortical nephron. So, there are a couple of terms you will get cortical nephron, medullary nephron. So, basically what does that mean is that those nephrons which are lying in the cortical region, there are nephrons which lies in the medullary region also. Okay. So, if they are lying in the cortical region, they are called cortical, uh, cortical nephrons, but if they lie in the medullary region, they are called medullary nephron, okay. but yet there are nephrons which whose part of their body lies in the cortical region, part of it lies in the medullary region. Okay. So, coming back and, so this is what I will be drawing is essentially a cortical, a cortical nephron. Cortical nephron. So, the structure is something like this. Okay. take time, because this structure is very critical and it, one has to understand this structure nicely, before one understands what is happening in the kidney. see this is a very convoluted tube, it is kind of changing shape and size and all other things. So, okay. now what I will do, let me just reason for this line is that the part of it, it which is okay. Okay. So, 
this is the part I was showing you the drawing. If you go back to this slide, so not uh, this one. Okay. So, so come back. Okay. So if this is the if I told you that this is the medullary region. So this part is the medullary region, and these nephrons are lying all over it. Likewise, likewise. So part of their body lies in the medullary region and part of it lies in the cortical region. Okay. This is very interesting. So, the when the major filtration assembly is lying in the cortical region, it is called cortical nephron okay. and when their major filtration body is lying in the medullary region, it is called medullary near. So, so what we will do in this picture, we will, okay. so this part is the cortical region, cortex and this part where it gets extended is called medulla, where the tube is kind of descending down. So, this, this region is called the distal tubule this is called the Baumann's capsule. This part is called the proximal tubule, so, and this one is called the thick segment. This one is called the thin segment. And there are significance for this different thin segment and thick segments. And this loop, what you see the looping thing taking place, this is called loop of Henle. One second, let's see if this okay. And this one is called the collecting duct. Showed you the okay fine. So what? Uh, so if you look at this structure, it has it's kind of a very tubular structure, like this. It moves like this, moves like this. It's a very convoluted tubular structure, and this is what all along the blood vessel. It runs very parallel to the blood vessel. So if I had to introduce the blood vessel. So, this already is a complex structure with the loop of Henle and the collecting duct. So, these collecting ducts essentially what is happening, I told you that all these uh, the way the urine formation is taking place is one second. Yeah. So, maybe this is the one. Yeah. So, all the collecting ducts, what I just now drew, all these collecting ducts are draining out onto the ureter and which is nothing but your urine. So, in other word whenever we talk about that there is a kidney failure that essentially means is your nephronal structure is getting damaged for some reason or other. So, this is and if you look at the nephron structure very carefully you will see that there are zones where the segment is thick, there are zone where segment is thin and as, uh, as we will move further, you will see what are the functional significance of these different kind of thick segment, thin segment and there are specific zones where specific. So, if I go back, come back to that structure. So, if you look at this structure, so the blood vessels are, now I am just introducing the blood vessel for your understanding let me of the blood vessels. So, the blood vessels are like this they are running like this two tubes and the major chunk of it is here like this. We will come back in detail with all these things how the blood vessels really is kind of you know. Okay. 
So, as I was showing you in one of the previous uh, slide, there are two parallel tubes side by side moving and this is how the complex it looks. So, that is why I kind of told you that I will draw a very simple diagram, which will make you understand that how they are, they are in side by side and there are specific zones. So, in the way it is like there are specific okay, fine, and there are specific zones where a specific kind of functions are being taking place and there is something called counter current mechanism. There are all the possible diffusion and movement of uh, solute is taking place diffusion, osmosis, counter current mechanism and everything. And as long as this basic structure is clear, it is fairly essential, uh, it is fairly easy to understand the rest. But if there is a problem in this basic structure, then you will have problem in understanding how this whole filtration assembly is functioning. So, now after that let us summarize what all we have done of now is that you have this arterial blood coming in okay, into the kidney and through the afferent arteriole. The one which is bringing the blood, an afferent arteriole moves into the glomerulus structure, which is basically the nephronal structure. Glomerulus structure, and then from there it moves on to the efferent arterioles. this exchange is essentially is taking place, this is, this is the part, this is the zone where I was showing you inside the Bauman capsule, where this is all entering, this is that zone, where this exchange is taking place. And from here, it moves on to the peritubular capillaries. peritubular capillaries and from there it moves on to the venous blood. So, this is the whole schematics of the way the blood is getting purified. So, this is the zone from here whenever whatsoever the urine is being formed out here is being eventually in out is being essentially drained out in the form of urine. This is how it works and this is the whole urine formation mechanism. So, again to summarize it, so you have the arterial blood coming in through the afferent arterioles moving into the glomerulus or the you can nephronal network and in the nephronal network the whole filtration is taking place. Once the filtration takes place along with some of the water molecules, it has to be conserved in mind it all the other like urea and all those things and few other which are not needed some of the electrolytes and it moves down along with some of the pus cells and everything in the form of urine. Whereas, the pure blood from here. So, here you have the pure blood, here you have the impure ones. This pure blood through the peritubular capillaries moves to the venous blood and then it moves on okay. and then it goes to the heart and there basically the oxygen is taken from the lungs and then again it circulates all over the body. So, this is the overall geometry by which this whole thing works. So, what we will be doing next is after this, we will come back and we will talk about how the exact filtration assembly is taking place. Okay. So, I will close in here. So, in the next class, we will talk about the exact mechanism why filtration is taking place and what are the 
different control mechanism.